last year, Craig, Bob Chapman, and I went on an exploratory trip to visit our 18 to 20 kids that we've been supporting and went just for a few days. And then this year, we went with a team of 10 where we um, did a couple days of a medical clinic and we preached in church. Uh, Paul Trulock was the pastor through a translator, which was interesting, and he did a great job. And then we also, you know, we had four young people who were just amazing um, with the kids, kind of doing VBS type activities. Um, it was amazing the growth that occurred between us and the church that we're sponsoring. We took out the pastor and his family and his staff to a nice restaurant in Port-au-Prince after church on Sunday, got really closer with them Another relationship that was really improved was between the church and the community. On day one of medical clinic, it was for the people of the church and the school. On day two, just through word of mouth of uh, people hearing about the medical clinic, people from all over the community came. And that really helps the church as the community sees how much they care for their needs. I will never, I hope, complain about a half hour wait in a doctor's office again. They sat on benches, they walked sometimes 10 miles carrying little kids in 95 degree heat and, and waited in four different places. They waited for us to get there two hours after they might have arrived. Then they went to wait for the doctor to figure out what medicines they need. Then they went to wait at the pharmacy where we helped become pharmacists in training. Then they waited in the prayer room where almost every one of them, despite all that time, prayed with us. Many of you know claimed to receive Christ at that time, but they let us pray with them through an interpreter, which was just incredible. So seeing them spend their whole day to get medicines that they needed badly, their hospital's been on strike for two months, so this was their only way to get very important medicines that we take for granted. So it was a, a real awakening to how spoiled we are and how grateful we should be for what we have. First, we would go there and we would set up, get cereal out for the kids. Uh, once the kids came in, we would usually go somewhere like the park or one time it was the library and stuff like that. And after that, we would go back for lunch to a school and then we would go to the church and attempt to teach them a lesson while they usually colored or did crafts. We did that for five days. Well, I remember this one little girl, her name was Cassidy. She was not having fun at all. It, every time I tried to talk to her, she would try and end the conversation as soon as possible. Like, did you have fun today? She said no. And, but on the last day, on the last day at the um, wave pool, she was having such a fun time and I, and I looked at her when the waves were hitting her and she said to me that she was having the best day of her life. And that really hit me because, I mean, it's, it's amazing to see God work through little things like that. It's a great opportunity to serve God. Um, it's an awesome time to get to know your fellow students um, better. Your relationship with God grows a lot because you see him working and it's a really all out amazing experience. Well, we were in Puerto Rico for 10 days and during the week in the morning we painted an orphanage, the whole outside of the orphanage. During the afternoon, we went to an apartment complex and did kind of a VBS type of thing with kids there um, that signed up to come. And so we would play with them because the apartment complex had like swings and basketball courts. So we played with them for a long time. And then we'd go into this little building and in the building, we would do like crafts and music and a story with the kids and just kind of hung out with them, connected with them. Um, so at the end of the week, the weekend that we were there, it was the weekend of the kids. And so at the church they had um, like clowns come for the kids. And so we went and we invited the kids from our apartment complex to come. And we were kind of only, we weren't expecting a lot to come, but 12 ended up coming out of like 20 that showed up during the whole week, which is pretty great and really encouraging for us um, that that many showed up. And so they seemed like they really enjoyed it. So that was fun. I think the biggest thing that I'll remember is Tuesday night, the church had a prayer service. 
and me and a few other people did their testimonies, but it wasn't necessarily that that kind of stuck out. It was the whole service really that, like I just saw the passion that the church had for Christ and the love that they had. We all just kind of got in a circle at the end and prayed for each other and prayed for our neighbors. And we were all praying out loud and it was so great to be able to pray for the person next to me when they didn't even really know what I was saying. And the person praying for me, I didn't know what they were saying, but you could feel like the love that we had for each other as a family in Christ. So that was pretty cool. It's life changing. I mean, you get to see different cultures. You get to see your family in Christ that are around the world. You don't really realize how much like your family in Christ loves you. And I never met these people before, but they just show their love and their blessings on me. And it was so great to be able to feel that and see that. And so I would definitely say mission trips are a great way to connect with God, to connect with different people around the world, to connect with the people you go with. And it's just a great experience overall.